Welcome back to Questing Beast. I'm Ben. Today we'll be taking a look at Phantasmagoria number two. This is a review copy that I was sent of this sword and planet zine designed for the Dungeon Crawl Classics RPG. Before we get started though, this video is brought to you by the Questing Beast Patreon. If you are interested in helping to support the channel and getting previews of my upcoming role-playing games, then you can head down to the link in the description below to help support me on Patreon. Thanks to all my patrons for doing that. So getting into this um, zine, this is the second issue. I'll put my link to issue one right up here that I've looked at in the past. Uh, this is all done by Chance Phillips, who does all of the writing and sort of masterminds this whole project. And these are very high quality zines, especially in their construction and uh, their art in particular. We have a cover here done by uh, Sam Mamelli, also known as Skullboy, also known as Better Legends. It's a really great piece. I love all of his work. He's the one who did the logo for this channel, actually. Here's our back cover. So this takes the Dungeon Crawl um, Classics system and transposes it into space. So the theme is very similar to stuff like uh, Solar Blades and Cosmic Spells, which is another book that I've reviewed previously. I think it's probably a little bit more gonzo because that's sort of the Dungeon Crawl classic style. The majority of this book is a series of uh, rules add-ons and random tables that you can use to enhance this type of genre. So we have some rules for spaceship combat here. And some maneuvers that your spaceship might want to go through. Loops, bursts, evades, hides, and so on. Along with a table of failed maneuver effects for when things go badly. Like all your passengers being uh, tossed around inside your ship. We have an example of spaceship combat and D30 artifacts. This is the sort of stuff that I like. I like concrete, gameable content that I can plug into my games. Luck siphons, we have replicators, infinite books, molecular scanners, liquid space. So drinking this provides awareness of all of space time, giving the drinker near perfect navigation. It's good stuff. We have alien poisons here. Starlight, moon dust, data sludge, crystal sound. And prosthetics you might throw on in case your limbs get blown off. Here's a great example of the art. So basically the takeaway here is that Chance Phillips has great taste in art because the artists that he has found to illustrate this are really good. Um, and they really complement the tone of the setting perfectly. So this one is done by, what is this, page 14 or 15? I guess that's Penny uh, Melgarejo. Melgarejo? Um, I know I'm butchering that name. I'm sorry. Um, I, I admired this artwork in the previous issue as well. It's very distinctive and really well done. We have Eldritch Limb Misfires, a stellar system generator. That's great. So you could have two suns orbiting each other, the number of cosmic bodies there. Maybe it's a small planet with some larger fauna on it. Valuable resources, status of the resource, types of animal life, governments available. Uh, this is stuff similar to what you might see in Stars Without Number, which also has planet generators. I think I would like to see more weirdness and more detail here. Perhaps expand these tables out so they had more concrete stuff. Most of the entries are what you would expect, right? So if they had inhabited by vegetation, animals, fauna, sapient life, dispersed cities, planetary civilization, right? That's like a, the standard scale that you would imagine. I would like more specific weird stuff. We have a monster generator here. Again, another really great piece by the same artist. Monster twists. Give them more tentacles. Give them more or less eyes. Change their weakness. This is some good advice. Um, but similar to what I mentioned about the planet generator here, most of the um, things on these tables are kind of what you would expect. They're the st sort of standard range of things that you would um, look for for a monster within these ranges, right? So approximate size, small, human size, large, or monstrous. That's kind of what you would expect. Monster class uh, or the armor class, you know, very ineffective all the way up to very heavily armored. Again, what I would have preferred is stuff that was very concrete, specific content that helped build the world and give me uh, weird stuff that added more flavor. And we have a number of ways to get around 
So all the way up for, from zip lines to hang gliders, uh, mirrors that lead to form a much more complex parallel dimension, uh, et cetera. And then an open game license at the back. So the artwork is really good. The layout is really good. Clearly a lot of passion went into this. And there was some really nice stuff, especially things like the um, D30 artifacts. I really like that because I would use this stuff and throw it into a Sword and Planet, uh, a Sword and Planet game. What I would like to see in the future from Phantasmagoria is more world building stuff, right? More concrete planets, uh, alien races, adventures, and so on. I think that would go a long way to really helping sell people on the sword and planet zine or the sword and planet genre by giving them exciting, uh, useful stuff that fires their imagination, makes them want to go there, wants them to, to uh, use that material and to get those items, to meet those monsters, etc. Generators are all well and good, but there are quite a few generators spread across many books um, that do basically the same thing. So focusing more on um, gameable content, I think would be a great direction for it to go in the future. I think that would be really exciting. Anyway, if you want to check out Phantasmagoria issues one and two, I'll put a link down in the description below to uh, where you can get those if you want to expand your DCC game with some more sci-fi twists. All right, that's for this review. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you guys next time.